Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. And welcome to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're welcome to join the program. Just call 1 855 400 Savage. 1 855 400 7282. As always, visit our website, michaelsavage.com. You can sign up for the Savage Newsletter. It arrives two to three times a week, right to your inbox, totally free. And also don't forget, at michaelsavage.com, celebrate America this July 4th with Countdown to Mecca, the bestseller by Dr. Michael Savage. Now, just as a reminder, Savage Scholarship winners will be announced July 2nd. 1,700 applicants Submitted essays on what it means to be an American. Five winners will receive $20,000, each a total of $100,000 that Dr. Michael Savage put into this. Again, Savage scholarship winners will be announced July 2nd. Well, the race for president, especially on the Republican side, continues to get crowded. Now, he announced just Last week, Donald Trump jumped into the race for president. Of course, the liberal media went after him, scorned him. Had, has anyone received the type of beating that Trump received? And, uh, doc, and uh, Dr. Trump, Donald Trump spoke with Dr. Savage just last week. Again, you can also hear that audio on the website, michaelsavage.com. Well, new poll comes out, and Donald Trump has now jumped to second place among New Hampshire Republicans only trailing Jeb Bush. Let's hear. This is Donald Trump weighing in. And one of the things he's talking about, what everyone else is talking about, he'd like to take down the Confederate flag. I think they should put it in the museum. Let it go. Respect whatever it is that you have to respect because it was a point in time and put it in a museum. But I would take it down, yes. Now, uh, Bobby Jindal. Of uh, uh, He has announced today he is also running for president. Governor Chris Christie is expected to get into the race. Let's take some phone calls, especially if you're someone that you really support what Donald Trump says. When you think about it, he was uh, mocked after his announcement and, com- and completely criticized, especially by the late night talk show hosts, the left, nonstop jokes about Trump. He steps in and immediately jumps to the head of the pack. Number two, behind Jeb Bush, 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Donald Trump also spoke out. Now, one of the things he talked about was illegals coming over the border. And many political observers were saying, you know, Trump has really done it. And he was saying all they do is Mexico. They send us murderers. They send us rapists. Trump spoke out today. And said, let's say the cut says Latino voters love him. Oh, I do great with Latino voters. I employ so many Latinos. I have so many people working for me. I'm a job creator. I create jobs. I'm a, a master job creator. No politician knows how to create jobs. They're all talk. They're no action. They don't know what they're doing. That's why I just came in second in the poll in New Hampshire, because people understand it. They understand it up in New Hampshire. I've been up there making speeches. And what I do, just like you're out here looking at this great project, that's what I do. And I create jobs. And, you know, the Latinos love Trump. And I love them. <laughs> what, what do you think of that? one 800 savage If you are Latino and you support Trump, Give us a call. Let's talk. Who do you like right now? Race for president. Now, this is important for Trump because this means he will and should be on the stage for the upcoming debate that's going to be on Fox because the field is so large, it's going to be cut back. So some people are not going to make the cut. I don't know if Chris Christie, I think he missed his turn. The time, I think, for Christie to get in. If you remember a couple of years ago at the Reagan dinner and people wanted Chris Christie more than they wanted Mitt Romney, but their governor of New Jersey did not jump in. And what about, you know, Huckabee is in the race. What about Marco Rubio? I know a lot of people like him. I don't think this is his time. I like Scott Walker. I like Governor Walker a lot. I'm not sure if he's 
ready for the for uh, the role of president. Uh, Jeb Bush remains the front runner. But what about if you're someone, you know, people were knocking when Trump announced and talked about going after Mexico and how China is ripping us off and the illegals coming in and they knocked him. But what's important about Trump is even though he's probably not going to win and the, although he's never held office and, you know, this is the first time he's actually going through what you should like about it is many of his themes will dominate in the debates and this will force some of the other candidates to take a, uh, a tougher stance on many of this. You know, Trump wasn't wrong. Mexico is, you know, reaching in and ripping off America. And China is definitely ripping off America. So right now, I, I mean, I know it's, well, as much as they say it's early, after that first debate, if you're not in, uh, good luck if you're not in on the first debate. But I'd like to talk, if you're a Trump supporter and you like what he said, and he, you know, you got to keep in mind, that was also, that was unscripted. He just was rolling, and he'll back up. He doesn't back down from anyone. He'll back up everything he's saying. I mean, as much as part of it to me is a show, and he's a little bit of a a P.T. Barnum, it's tough to argue with the guy. What do you think? 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Let's start off with that. Who do you like in the race for president as far as the Republican primary, the Republican primary? I mean, there's so many of them, but, you know, it's a lot of still the same names. And some of the people just don't seem to be moving. I mean, Huckabee is in the race. Is is anyone is Mike Huckabee really going going to uh, to get elected? Of course, it's Jeb Bush. What about those that are Chris Christie supporters? You don't hear them as much. You know, you go back three, four years ago, there was a big movement to try to get Christie in. When he spoke at that Reagan dinner and, you know, he was the heir to the throne of Reagan, he, he really has not come back from hugging Obama during the storms and being buddy-buddy with him. And then also uh, the Bridgegate scandal. And Bobby Jindal, I, I don't know, is there really like a big onslaught of people that want Bobby Jindal to, to get in the race? I know Ben Carson has uh, a lot of supporters, but the big story today, Trump has jumped number Two right now in the New Hampshire polls. One eight five five four hundred Savage. Let's start on line four. Marsha is listening on WJR in Michigan. Marsha, this is John DePietro, and you're up first on the Savage Nation. Hello, Marsha. Hi. How are you? This Very well, Marsha. Go right ahead. I would vote for Donald Trump because I like everything he has to say. And, you know, they made fun of Ronald Reagan calling him the actor and everything, and he ran for president and got voted twice. And I think uh, Donald Trump would be good. And if he gets elected, I would I would like to even see if he would have uh, Ben Carson as his vice president. Well, he, are, he already threw out Marsha. He already said he'd like Oprah as his vice presidential candidate. Now, Marsha, but Reagan had been governor of California. It doesn't worry you that he's never held elected office? No, it doesn't. No? And I, is there is there one thing that he said that you really pump your fist on? Pardon me? Is there is there one uh, policy, for instance, that Trump said? How about when Trump said, I'm going to build the greatest wall you've ever seen between America and Mexico, I'm going to make Mexico pay for it. Is there one thing that Trump's, Donald Trump said that really jumped out at you? He said he wasn't going to cut Social Security, Medicaid, and Medicare. Yep. He said money should be put into that. Yes. And I so, hope he speaks up more about it. And when it comes to the debates, I'm looking forward to that because I think he's going to shake up the Republican Party. And people are getting tired of the Republicans and Democrats. We voted in November for Republicans, and they're not doing anything. Thank you for the call, Marsha. Now, if you go to the website, michaelsavage.com, Donald Trump told Dr. Savage he would not go three, third party. He is staying in the Republican Party. 1-855-400-SAVAGE is our phone number. First-time callers, welcome to call in. Let's go to line five. Greg is listening in uh, Boca Raton, Florida. Greg, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. 
Yeah, hi. I think that this man is a game changer. He's not afraid to say what's on his mind. And even if he doesn't win, the fact that he has the ability to make uh, points, he's not afraid to say anything. Everyone else is guarded in their speech, careful in what they're going to say, worried about who they're going to offend. And this guy's not worried about that. He's worried about what's right and what's wrong. And he sees things that other people don't see on a business perspective. And I think that right now, uh, a lot of things that he said based on just business facts alone make a lot of sense. We've made a lot of bad deals over the course of many years, and we're stuck in these things. And and no one's come up with solutions. Here's a guy that even if his solutions aren't 100 percent right, he's got a, he's got something that he's thinking about that he would do. Thank you, thank you for the call, Greg. You know, isn't it amazing when he when Trump gave his speech? And let's hear another cut from Trump. But when he gave his speech, you have to admit he was just talking to the people. He wasn't doing the political correct, correctness the way he talked about China ripping us off and how Mexico's ripping us off and that they're losers in Washington. Let's hear another cut from uh, Donald Trump. And I'm all over the place. I'm, I did get that great poll today in New Hampshire. I, I can't believe Bush is in first place. You know, I'm, some people are thrilled. I'm not thrilled because how could Bush be in first place? This guy can't negotiate his way out of a paper bag. <laughs> 1-855-400-7282. Let's go to line six. Joe is listening on WMAL. Joe, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, John. How you doing? Very well, Joe. Go right ahead. I'm so glad to hear somebody back on Donald Trump because, for one, I'm so sick and tired of the political... Um, Yes, that they all promise you everything, and I'm a Republican. I was glad to see that we finally, you know, got back to where we're uh, supposed to be. But they're not doing anything, just like that previous caller said. I was so tickled to death there to hear Donald uh, just just tell it like it is. We don't need a politician running this country anymore. We've had them for so many years, and all they've ever done is run us in the ground. There's no Social Security. Our health care sucks. Business sucks. Employment sucks. We need a businessman to start running this country. Somebody that has gone up against all kinds of odds. You know, I mean, Donald Trump, he negotiates with banks and everything every day. He knows how to run a business. That's what this country needs. It needs a business. Put the business back into the country where we can start getting jobs and people can start earning a decent living and not depending on other people. Thank you for the call, Joe. Before we go to the break, I do want to play, folks. This is President Obama. I want to play clip seven. He was speaking at a dinner at the White House and talking about how people should be treated and also talking about the sacredness of Ramadan. Our annual White House iftar recognizes the sacredness of Ramadan to more than 1.5 billion Muslims around the world. It's a time when Muslims recommit themselves to their faith following days of discipline with nights of gratitude for the gifts that God bestows. It's a time of spiritual renewal and a reminder of one's duty to our fellow man to serve one another and lift up the less fortunate. It is the President of the United States. All right, 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Also coming up, Mitch McConnell speaks out. Mitch McConnell speaks out about the uh, Confederate flag controversy, Hillary Clinton, the news, more on President Obama. It's John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. The risk... You're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Welcome to join the program. Just call 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. As always, visit the website, michaelsavage.com, where, by the way, you can sign up for the Savage Newsletter. Arrives two or three times a week. Right into your inbox, totally free. Sign up at michaelsavage.com. Donald Trump. Also, on the website, you'll see the audio and be able to listen to the audio of Michael Savage interviewing Donald Trump. But the big news, Trump, Donald Trump has now jumped into second place in the New Hampshire primary right now, only behind Jeb Bush. So Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal announced today that he's running for president. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie still expected. So we're talking about the race for president on 
the Republican side, especially though Trump came under withering, brutal criticism after his announcement. But it seems to be resonating with the voters, with the people, especially in New Hampshire. Let's go out to your phone calls. Let's go to Carl on line seven. He's listening in Clarkston, Michigan. Carl, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Uh, hi. I just want to let you know I am in the advertising and public relations business for 45 years, and I can guarantee you that if Donald Trump gets elected, he will bring this country back. He understands advertising. He's got the bucks to spend. He has the ability to communicate with the public, and no more of this horsing around. Let's get the jobs back, and let's deal with the problems that we have, and he has the ability to do it. Now, Carl, it doesn't bother you. He's never held elected office. He's never been a governor. He's never been a mayor. He's never been anything like that. He could have run for governor of New York. He could have run for mayor of New York City. That doesn't bother you that he's, he's, he's never held office. No, it doesn't matter because what he has is business savvy. And what was that old saying? It's the economy, stupid. Remember that years ago? Well, that's where we're at right now. The people running the show right now are wrecking the economy on purpose. We get it. Donald Trump gets it. He knows how to bring us back big time. Thank so you. Then, and I'm hoping he's going to choose Dr. Ben Carson for vice president. That would oh. really be cool. Thank you for the call, Carl. Now, he's already said that maybe he would consider Oprah. Now, there are other Republicans making news. One of them, let's hear clip 17, is Mitch McConnell. Here's Mitch McConnell saying, consider removing now the Jefferson Davis statue. We, curiously enough, have a statue of Jefferson Davis in the Capitol in Frankfurt. Davis' sole connection to Kentucky was he was born there. He subsequently moved to Mississippi, and Kentucky, of course, did not secede from the Union. So I think it's appropriate, certainly in Kentucky, to be talking about the appropriateness of continuing to have Jefferson Davis' statue in a very prominent place uh, in our state capitol. Now, they're talking about the statue. They're talking about the battle flag. Should all Civil War monuments come down? 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to The Savage Nation. You're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You can call into the program. Just dial 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Celebrate America this July 4th with Countdown to Mecca, the new bestseller by Dr. Michael Savage. And also, coming up July 2nd, Savage Scholarship winners will be announced. 1,700 applicants submitted essays on what it means to be an American. Five winners will receive $20,000 each, total of $100,000 that Michael Savage put into it. And while you're at the website, sign up for the Savage newsletter. Sign up at michaelsavage.com. It's totally free, and the Savage newsletter arrives two to three times a week to your inbox. And I'll tell you, that's the first thing that I read. You'll enjoy getting it. Sign up if you're a Michael Savage fan for the Savage Newsletter right on michaelsavage.com. Now, while you're at the uh, website, you can also check out the latest news and headlines, such as how about President Obama extending amnesty to illegals in prisons and jails. Also the story, sweeping new hostage police due to Idiot at State Department will harm Americans. There's also the link. This is so horrific. This shows the enemy that we are dealing with. New ISIS video shows caged prisoners lowered into a swimming pool and drowned. Log on at michaelsavage.com. You can also check the headlines on the Drudge Report as well. And some of the headlines, the Pope now saying... The Pope weighing in. Boy, the Pope uh, continues to make news. But the Pope now weighing in, saying that as far as he he's concerned, the Pope, that the breakup of, of the family, family breakups, can be morally necessary. 
Secret Service nabs most wanted computer hacker. How about the bill that would allow pets to be buried with their owners? Are you that much of a dog lover, cat lover? You'd like to be buried with your pet? And as we're speaking about the race for president, a new poll, Chris Christie, the governor of New Jersey, new low, I believe it's just a 30% approval rating. Again, those are just some of the headlines from the Drudge Report. Someone that's getting some good poll numbers is Donald Trump. He is now number two in New Hampshire, right behind Jeb Bush. Let's go out to your phone calls. Annie is on line two, listening on WABC. Annie, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, John. Thanks for taking my call. You Very know, welcome. I'm so sick of hearing Jeb, the illegal for here out of love, Bush, being number one. I have no idea. What are those, the progressive loons, polls? We listen into CNN, everybody talking about Bush. They love him because he's another socialist. And the thing that I do is I go out to the polls on the Internet. Um, Punching Bag, The Daily Caller, Red State, a whole bunch of them. He isn't even in the top ten. If you look at the the demographics of the 50 states and people voting, Bush is not even in the top ten. Well, as far as though, he he is still, thank you for the call, but he is still the front runner. Uh, maybe on the conservative branch. But, you know, a big part of this that you have to remember, folks, is who gets in to the debate, because not everyone's going to get in to that big first debate that's going to be coming up on Fox. One thing that seems assured is now Donald Trump is going to go get into that debate without question. Will Bobby Jindal get in? I, I don't know. He's right now still really nowhere. Is uh, Mike Huckabee going to get in? I I, I'm not sure. He, he he certainly is is not strong. Let's go to line eight. Marty is listening in North Carolina on WFNC. Marty, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hey, John. I'm so glad that uh, you and Mike are giving us a regular platform here to stand on so that we can be heard and give our support for Donald Trump. You know, absolutely, yes, Donald Trump all the way. But there are uh, two things that I was want to make comments on. Number one, he has that image, of course, like Mitt Romney, rich, white, male, that they're going to destroy, they're going to tear it apart. I think Donald has an aggression. I think he has a way with words. I think he has a style and a charisma that he can handle that, but he's still got to do something as far as the vice president uh, candidate. I'd say Condoleezza Rice. What's your thoughts? Well, thank you for the call, Marty. It's not so much what I think. It's what he said, and he said that he's open to Oprah. I know some people have mentioned Ben Carson, keep in mind, it, 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 I mean, I, I know people like they dare the ticket. It's still it's a matter of who's going to be at the, at the top of the ticket. Um, I, I, it should. I mean, one thing, though, I mean, as much as people say, and as the last caller did, he's like Mitt Romney. Romney was governor. Romney had run for senator against Ted Kennedy in the 90s. Romney was was governor of Massachusetts. Trump has never held elected office. One eight five five four hundred Savage. One eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. Although I did like the way he talked about Mexico is going to pay for that wall, and I like the way he talks about other countries like China and Mexico ripping us off. Let's go to line three. Charles is listening on WMAL in Washington, in Virginia. Charles, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Charles. Thank you, and thank you for the Savage Nation. I um, I just wanted to pose a question on. You know, the Confederacy and the flag and, and the apparatus of all the Confederacy, uh, you know, um, wear that people have and put on their cars and their shirts and such. And um, I've been in Virginia 22 years. I'm an Italian-American, a veteran, 66 years old, from New Jersey, Jersey City. And when I first came down here, I thought that, you know, it was offensive. And then I got to meet so many wonderful people who fly that flag for pride of family heritage, sons and daughters of the Confederacy, and never in all these years have I ever heard any derogatory thing uh, against any race or person. So that's my feelings, and my question is, should they take down the Colosseum in Rome because, you know, people of all different origins of slavery were killed there? (laughs) That's my... uh, 
Definitely. Interesting. Thank you for the call. Interesting question, Charles. But you, you, folks, you have to, right now, th- this thing is a freight train. Whether it be, you know, Walmart and different companies are no longer going to have any merchandise with the flag. Now they're talking about, what about those in the South? Now they're talking about taking down all Civil War monuments, uh, taking down different statues. You have Hillary Clinton. Let's hear clip 13. Hillary Clinton speaking in a black church. This is the front runner right now, the Democrat Party, saying that all lives matter. The truth is, equality, opportunity, civil rights in America are still far from where they need to be. Our schools are still segregated, in fact, more segregated than they were in the 1960s. How is that possible? How, how is, is there anyone listening to that? Ask your children you go to a public school. How, how is that possible? There's no way that that is accurate. If anything, there's people from all over the country in all different languages being spoken in the public schools. You don't have the amount of influx of people from uh, illegals in the schools. There's no way that that is accurate. I can't believe that she even made a statement like that. More segregated. Are you kidding me? You go in some public schools and all different times of languages being spoken. one 855 400 Savage, 1 855 400 7282. But Trump right now is number two in New Hampshire. Let's go to line four. Jonathan on Long Island is listening on WABC. Jonathan, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Jonathan. Hey, John. How are you? Very well. Well, now I've sort of heard and seen everything. Donald Trump being number two is just, it is, it is shocking, beyond shocking. I think there is a misconception that underscores this poll and I mean number one haven't we had enough of you know self-adulating narcissistic personalities especially the number one that's currently occupying the White House who uses the word I I I all the time right Uh, but I am a staunch conservative and I live in New York and it's one thing to be a kingpin with whatever billions of dollars you have and you can basically boss people around and tell them anything uh, tell them to do whatever you want want them to do and they're pretty much there at your behest and bidding. But, you know, when you're running a country, you can't just go ahead and browbeat people and doing whatever you want to do. Uh, and I think that that's a big problem. I mean, this, you know, Donald Trump is uh, a person who is uh, accustomed to getting his way, and um, he'll beat you down. Uh, you can't do that as president, and I think it'll be a joke for the Republican Party uh, to even consider uh, him. I think people that don't recognize that, it's not just about your ideas, and running a business. It's about it's about people, it's about how you deal with people, it's about how you respect people, it's how you respect people with opposing opinions. Uh, uh, you know, so that's, I think, going to be a big issue. And as a New Yorker, I would never vote for Donald Trump, even though I'm a staunch conservative. I know that he, I'm, I'm a lover of Israel, and I know that he loves Israel as well. Uh, but at the same time, there are too many other negatives. Th- thank you for the call, Jonathan. You know, it, it also, I mean, a big part of it is leadership, I think, of, of what the country's been through under President Obama. The country is obviously desperate for leadership. But look at how he is connecting with people. People heard him. The media crushed him on his announcement and made fun of his announcement. And instead, people that were listening were cheering him on. Let's go to line six. John is listening in Weatherford, Texas on WBAP. John, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, John. Hey, John. Thank you very much for taking my phone call. Very welcome. Uh, John, do you know how many county seats throughout the South have either a statue, a plaque, a monument dedicated to the Confederate veterans that served in that war? I don't know the number, but I know it's a lot, because I know here in our own county seat we do have a statue uh, commemorating the Confederate veterans. My grandmother was a daughter of the Confederacy. I don't think most conservatives even realize what just happened here. Um, the It set a huge precedent, and it will not stop at just the flag. You know how many schools, libraries, um, other things that are named after Confederate um, Civil War heroes, generals. I mean, you, you're talking about, like, altering not only history but much of the landscape a a landscape it is yeah my dad 
still goes and puts the Confederate flag on the um, at the cemetery where his great grandfather and other several others are buried. Wow! Um, in in remembrance of them, and I think, um, honestly, John, I think if it goes further into into each individual county, there's going to be resistance. Hmm. I mean, uh, you're you're stepping on you're stepping on toes now that are very personal. Right, right, right now, John. There, there, thank you for the call, John. There's no one stepping forward and and defending uh, to still fly the Confederate battle flag. Every it's the opposite. E- everything is is going going the other way. And maybe people want to wait till things settle down a little bit. But first, it's the flag. Now they're talking about taking down different statues. Then it'll be different monuments. One eight five five. 400 Savage 1 855 400 7282. Those of you that live in Tennessee or Texas or South Carolina, how would you feel about it if it, suddenly they started to remove all the plaques, all the monuments? You know, one thing that John said is right. It is almost a little bit, it's like an effort where they're trying to erase history. So, and, and all because of that degenerate 21 year old that decided to go into the church and kill those poor innocent nine people but th- this this is a strong movement right now and right now we haven't seen one person and on the republican side we're normally and it's being thrown it, it's just the opposite they are all stepping up and defending taking down the flag let's go to line one james is listening on ksfo james this is john DePietro and you're up on the savage nation hello james hey john how's it going thanks very well james go right ahead yeah, thanks a lot for filling in for uh, Michael. You're doing a it's a privilege. Awesome. Hey, um, I am super excited about this election. Um, you know, Donald Trump, he said everything that I wanted to hear from a politician for a long time, and none of them are uh, willing or brave enough to say it. And, man, I'm telling you, this election is going to change things because he is not only exposing, you know, the, the media – you know, the government media complex, um, Republicans, too, who are making fun of him and not mm. taking him seriously. Yep. I'm taking him very seriously, and I think that it just goes to show that they're really scared of him. Thank you for the call, James. We're going to find out if his numbers continue. Again, one eight five five four hundred savage John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Line 5, Frank is in New York City listening on WABC. Frank, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Well, thank you. Yes, you hear me? Yes, very well. Okay, so, uh, well, I'm, I'm a Trump number one admirer. For the four, the past 40 years, I've been listening and hearing all about Donald Trump's accomplishment and the reason behind his huge success, because he hired all the right people, and the rest, fire, fire, fired. That's exactly what he's going to do in the White House. Hmm. If you are not really fit for the job, he's going to fire everybody else. I think he's going to clean up the mess that left by George Bush, one and two, and especially Obama. This is what I think. You think that, thank you for the call, Frank, you think that Donald Trump will be the one to take over. He's number two right now in New Hampshire. Let's go to line seven. Angle is listening on WMAL. Angle, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, John. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, Very well. I just want to say it fits right with, uh, right again into the agenda from the administration. One bad apple who just uh, poses with a flag uh, makes, you know, they all jump on a bad wing. We got to ban that. It's the same like with the gun control. One uh, person kills somebody, doesn't matter who it is. Well, right now, <laughs> I mean, Warner Brothers is stopping selling. The Dukes of Hazard car. That's how far that is spreading. One eight five five four hundred Savage. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. The you're listening. 
to the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. This is The Savage Nation. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, inviting you to join the program today. You can call 1 855 400 7282 savage Celebrate America this July 4th with Countdown to Mecca. Countdown to Mecca, the latest bestseller from, you guessed it, Dr. Michael Savage. Remember, while you're at the website, michaelsavage.com, sign up for the Savage newsletter. Arrives two to three times a week, right to your inbox, totally free. Sign up today, the Savage Newsletter, right at michaelsavage.com. Coming up July 2nd, Savage Scholarship winners will be announced. July 2nd, 1,700 applicants submitted essays of what it means to be an American. Five winners will receive $20,000 each, a total of 100000 that Michael put into this. Again, that's coming up. July 2nd. In the news, controversy continues regarding not only the Confederate flag now, now Warner Brothers is announcing they will no longer sell Dukes of Hazards cars. There's now a movement to pull down certain monuments put up in tribute of the Civil War. Certain monuments people could be calling to come down. You also have Donald Trump in the news, going to number two in New Hampshire. So with all of that as a backdrop, what is President Obama talking about? Let's hear it, Ramadan. You know, when our values are threatened, we come together as one nation. When three young Muslim Americans were brutally murdered in Chapel Hill earlier this year, Americans of all faith rallied around that community. And obviously tonight our prayers remain with Charleston and Mother Emanuel Church. As Americans, we insist that nobody should be targeted because of who they are or what they look like, who they love, how they worship. Now, Donald Trump, as I mentioned, number two right now behind Jeb Bush, latest New Hampshire poll. Now, Trump was asked, the media went after him because he made comments about Mexico saying, what do they do? The Mexico rips us off. They send us illegals. They send us rapists and murderers. Instead, Trump responded saying, listen, just because I said that, Latinos love me. Oh, I do great with Latino voters. I employ so many Latinos. I have so many people working for me. I'm a job creator. I create jobs. I'm a, a master job creator. No politician knows how to create jobs. They're all talk. They're no action. They don't know what they're doing. That's why I just came in second in the poll in New Hampshire, because people understand it. They understand it up in New Hampshire. I've been up there making speeches. And what I do, just like you're out here looking at this great project, that's what I do. And I create jobs. And, you know, the Latinos love Trump. And I love them. You can hear the interview. Michael Savage spoke with Donald Trump on Friday. You can hear that interview. Just log on at michaelsavage.com. Let's go out to your phone calls. Line 7, Helen is listening in Queens on WABC. Helen, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Helen. Hi, hi, John. Hi there. You know, this Bush should have listened to his mother. His mother said this country had enough Bushes. Uh, Trump would have been number one. But Trump, uh, when you said that he was never a, a governor or a mayor or Correct. a politician, but look what these governors, mayors, and politicians did to our beloved America. He said he would get qualified people, to uh, staff, to be with him. So let's give him a chance. I think he'll do a great job. And God bless Trump. He, thank you for the call, Helen. He's definitely resonating as much as he's criticized. I mean, I, I do like he talks about China rips us off, Mexico rips us off. I like him uh, 
Donald Trump saying he's going to build that great wall and make Mexico pay for it. Let's go to line one. Ron is listening on WVNN in Huntsville, Alabama. Ron, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Uh, hey, John. How are you? Andrew? Very well, Ron. Hello. Uh, I just had a couple comments. Man, I think the uh, the South Carolina shootings was uh, first uh, an attack on Christianity before anything else. Um, and I also think you know they they keep talking about the flag, the, the Confederate flag, but the the LGBT flag uh, is offensive to a ton of Christians, and you don't hear them. You know, they're not. We're not out protesting on the streets. You, you don't like that flag. But, well, well, Ron, when when he walked into that church and said, I'm here to kill black people, it, as much as maybe you're saying it's an attack on Christianity, it, I mean, that, those were his words. This was someone as, as demented. I, I think it is unfair, Ron, that suddenly the entire culture of the South is under attack just because of one lone, demented, sick, lunatic that who who should be terminated, who should receive the death penalty for what he did to those nine people. I agree. You know, I mean, what if he would have had a Muslim flag on, you know, an ISIS flag or something? You know, that's uh, there's a, thank you for the call, Ron. There's a very disturbing story about ISIS in their latest form of killing people. You can log on at michaelsavage.com. It's terrible. Now it seems they've gotten bored with beheadings. Now they're putting people in cages and drowning them. That's how frightening it is. Let's go to line two. Ed is listening on KKOB in New Mexico. Ed, you're up. This is John DePetro, and you're on the Savage Nation. Hello, Ed. Hi, John. Good to talk to you. Thank uh, you. You know, my thought is there was 600,000, not 60,000, 600,000 lives lost during the Civil War. Half of those were Southern Confederates. Okay, now they're going to take down my flag and disrespect those people that lost their lives. They were Southern America, yes, but it was America. I don't think that's right. And, you know, if they're going to take down the flag, then in my mind, they should take, get rid of all the MLK boulevards throughout the whole nation. Now, why is that? Well, if, you know, if they're going to disrespect my relatives that have died, during the Southern War, uh, which basically that was a war over economics, not over slavery. No, I understand. But, Ed, you know, right now, that that battle flag, fair or unfair, it, it, is, it is associated. People of color say when they see that, they think of race. They think of, of racist. It, it's used by the Klan. Uh, this kid was posing with it. There's nothing remotely close to to Martin Luther King, but you feel taking down the flag will be disrespecting those that died. Yes, and in the meantime, if we're going to just take down our history, let's take down all the MLK boulevards. <laughs> Who was MLK? But, I have no idea. He was he was not a president. He was not a senator. He was a preacher that happened to be well spoken. Well, I think there's no violence associated uh, with any of the Martin Luther King boulevards. I mean, good luck with that, and better, good luck with trying to get someone who would stand up and say that they want them, they want all those uh, taken down. Let's go to line nine. Kelly is listening on WBMQ in Hilton Head. Kelly, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Oh, thanks, for John, for having me. Very welcome. Go right ahead. I was just wondering what's going to happen when the liberals realize that I'm a Marine vet, but uh, every Army base in the South is named after a Confederate general. Fort Jackson, Fort Hood, Fort Bragg, Fort Stewart, Fort Benning, Fort Gordon. What are they, when are they going to stop? That is a very good point, Kelly. I don't know if people are aware of that, but Kelly, at the same time, can you name for me one Republican who's who's defending them, saying that they should not be taking down the flag? Uh no, everybody's just jumping for the politics right now. This is yes. all just as if, uh, I think um, another radio show talk said it. And this is this flag issue and the shooting. This is the liberal wet dream. They finally got a white guy to be a racist and kill people that are innocent. Uh, uh, it's a distraction for the trade deal that's going on in the secret rooms in the White House that a lot of Republicans are jumping on board for. And I'm just wondering what kind of photos or emails or phone records that Obama has on them the blackmail because I really think that's going on. Thank you for the call, Kelly. Again, Lindsey Graham says take it down. I, I can't find. Is anyone seen any one person that's a Republican that's running for president 
that says keep the flag up. It seems right now, how do you feel about next they're going to move towards Civil War monuments or plaques or anything? That's interesting what, what Kelly pointed out, the fact that, that uh, a number of the military bases, uh, they're, they're all named uh, after people from from the Civil War. Let me go to line five. Stephen is listening on WABC. Stephen, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Stephen. Hey, John. Thanks for taking my call. Very welcome. I keep I keep hearing people saying, you know, how could they do this? How could they do that? But this is nonsense. So my question is, how long are the people of America going to tolerate these quote unquote leaders and this attack on personal freedoms and rights? So make no mistake about it. This is an attack. You know, now they're talking about banning merchandise and censoring sales. But we need to ban them and boycott these retailers, you know, and join, who join any of this lunacy. You know, people need to stand up and let these thugs know that they derive their power from us, the people. And we need to fight back and protest and let them know that this censorship won't be tolerated. So I don't care if my flag offends someone or this flag offends someone. It's about freedom. So it's the price of freedom that we pay for. But do you fly that flag, Stephen? You fly the Confederate battle flag? I don't, I don't fly it personally, but you know what? I don't take offense to it because, you know what? Well, I don't fly a gay flag either because that offends me. But uh, do I care? No, it's your personal freedom in the United States. Well, I mean, Pete, listen, people can fly it, but it's just not going to be flown over the state government. And the people that, that are in business decide they don't want to carry it. And then the marketplace will decide. If there's somebody that does want to sell it, they're going to be allowed to sell it. There's really no censorship. But at the same time, you can't force retailers to, to carry the product. Let's go to line three. Kurt is listening on WBAP in Fort Worth. Kurt, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Kurt. Hello. Uh, nice to talk to you, John. Hey, Thank you. Uh, the re- the, um, I think one of the reasons, the main reasons that the government media and the, and the rhino Republicans are so scared of Trump is, you know, if you ask him about the flag, he's going to go, you know what, I think it should be in a museum. You guys worry about that. I'm going to worry about the big problems like trade, jobs, et cetera. And, you see, that's what scares them so much. Everybody goes running around in circles over the Confederate flag. Do you think Trump's sitting in his office thinking about the Confederate flag? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, though, Kurt. When we Coming up, I'll, I'll, we'll play exactly, because Trump did mention the Confederate flag, and you'll be able to hear directly what he said about it. We'll take your phone calls. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Just dial 1-855-400-7282. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I. This is the Savage Nation. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, inviting you to call into the program. Why not you? Just dial 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. How about CNN's Don Lemon? Really stirred things up. Holding a sign with the N-word. Uncensored on it. He was on uh, Dr. Drew's show on HLN. That was his goal. To get people talking. Don Lemon. He's the one. He is must-watch TV. During any riot situation, he's also the one that posed the question, do you think that the airliner disappeared into a black hole? Lemon defended displaying the word so prominently, saying while he doesn't personally advocate use of the N-word, he feels a journalistic obligation to not dance around certain words when tackling sensitive issues. Like Don Lemon explaining journalistic responsibilities. All right, let's go out to your phone calls. Line one, Beverly is listening on KQAM in Wichita. Beverly, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Thank you. Listen, I'm a 61-year-old um, baby boomer, and all I've got to say, if Trump makes it to the voters, uh, to the to the ballots, I will be so excited to vote for that man. Talk about a breath of fresh air. I am so sick to death of these slick politicians and all their canned speeches and everything else. Finally. Finally, we have a guy saying the things that we're all thinking, but we don't say out loud. Like what? We're so respectful of him. Now, like what, Beverly? What did, what did he say? I'm not questioning. Well, what did he say that you really liked? Mexico and getting them to pay for it and China and all that. I feel like we're the United. We're becoming 
like the United States of China. I'm sick of it. <laughs> it's time that Americans put a stop to this. And switching gears for just a minute, this whole thing with the flag, come on. At the end of the day, when we all go to bed, guess what? We are Americans. And just put all this nonsense aside and let's do the things that really matter. Let's make great jobs for our future, our grandchildren, and all of that. Let's try to get ourselves out of debt. Let's try to get other countries to like us again, to appreciate what the United States of America has done for so many countries. We come to everybody's aid. Well, let's stop so much aid. Let's pay a little attention to what's going on at home. I think Donald Trump is going to do that. All right. Now, speaking of that, let's play This Is... What Donald Trump said about the Confederate flag. I think they should put it in the museum, let it go, respect whatever it is that you have to respect because it was a point in time and put it in a museum, but I would take it down, yes. Line five, Tom is in Connecticut listening on WDRC. Tom, this is John DePietro and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. How you doing? Very well, Tom. Go right ahead. Somewhat controversial view maybe on your show, maybe not. But, yeah, I think the flag should come down. Not a lot of people are agreeing with that point of view, but I'm going to put it this way. I'm from Connecticut. I'm a damn Yankee. That's two words for those of you in Alabama. Um, And the South lost the war. I mean, to me, when I see that flag, I just see people who are proud to be losers. Well, that that seems a little harsh. And and most of the time when you do see it, I mean, look, it was on the Dukes of Hazard. It's at you you go to a NASCAR race, you'll certainly see certain flags. It, it's also kind of like a it's a rebel feel to it. Um, so and there is Southern pride. I mean, you don't have to uh, begrudge or in, insult people. For a lot of people, it does mean something, but it it is become to mean something else. But to to watch where this is going to go is just how far they're going to push. Should all monuments from the from the Civil War be removed? Should all plaques? that have uh, various generals or different people be removed. I think that's going too far. But right now, I want to remind people, you, you don't have one leader, one political leader that has stepped up and said, no, I think you should fly the flag. If anything, everyone's kind of mimicking what Trump said. And that is you want to fly it at home, fine. You want to fly it in a museum, that's fine. But you don't fly it above state government. one 400 savage This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. This is The Savage Nation. You're listening to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You can call the program 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Celebrate America this Fourth of July with Countdown to Mecca, the latest bestseller from Dr. Michael Savage. You can get it right at the website, michaelsavage.com. And while you're at the website, don't forget to sign up for the Savage Newsletter. Now, the Savage Newsletter arrives two to three times a week right to your inbox. It's totally free, and you can sign up at michaelsavage.com. Savage Scholarship Winners. I received an email. When will the scholarship winners be announced? Well, July 2nd, 1,700 applicants submitted essays on what it means to be an American. Five winners will receive $20,000 each, total of 100000 that Michael Savage put into this. Again, for more details, log on at the website, michaelsavage.com. Now, while you're at the website, you can see store all the latest stories, news, and headlines. All the stories. Plus, don't forget, check out the Drudge Report. The Drudge Report, the same for breaking news. But some of the stories you're going to find, boy, talk about under the headline of, no kidding, Whole Foods, Whole Foods chain faces New York City probe after investigators found, quote, worst case of overcharges. Gee, no kidding. You mean the $10 apple that they charge you when you go in there? Some of the other headlines. U.S. Power Grid hit with increasing number of hack attacks. Mystery as 600 dogs jump from haunted suicide bridge. The Pope says family breakups can be morally necessary. Chris Christie hits new low in New Jersey, 30% approval rating. Now, as far as michaelsavage.com, you also get the latest news and headlines. Obama extends amnesty 
to illegals in prisons and jails. Why should those people receive amnesty? And also, how about the new ISIS video? Shows caged prisoners lowered into a swimming pool and drowned. It is absolutely horrific. I saw some other headlines. Illegal immigrant sex offenders living in Memphis neighborhoods. Some Memphis neighborhoods are home to sex offenders. And after a Fox 13 investigation, turns out many of them are undocumented immigrants. They discovered hundreds of zip codes with a nationwide database, all living unchallenged in some of these neighborhoods. President Obama has unveiled new rules that would basically allow families to offer private ransom payments for relatives kidnapped overseas. Of course, the big headline, how about Donald Trump jumps to second amongst New Hampshire Republicans. But that ISIS video shows these these prisoners lowered into a swimming pool, drowned, shot with an RPG and blown up with explosive filled necklaces. Sickening seven minute video shows the death of several ISIS prisoners. Underwater cameras capture them thrashing before falling unconscious. Folks, this is, this is another example that the war on ISIS needs to be stepped up. Let's go to your phone calls. Again, 1-855-400-7282. They made, they made fun of Trump when he announced for president. I guarantee you they're not laughing right now. Let's go to line one. Drew is listening in Texas on WBAP. Drew, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Drew. Hi, Mr. John. How are you? Very well, Drew. Go right ahead. I just had a comment about the the whole flag thing. It's it's really crazy. I mean, I'm not I'm not tied to the Confederate flag. I don't have any family. I'm like four generations down. I'm from immigrants, so on and so forth. But it's a flag. I mean, I don't mean to step on any Southerners' toes, but it's a flag. It symbolizes what you want it to mean. And if you have family tied to that flag, yes, it's a symbol to you. It was a symbol to the, the South Enterprise and so on and so forth. And But where is this Obama stuff going to end? I mean, for... Nadru, but you, 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 you see that Dylan Roth, you know, posing for the camera. He's waving the Confederate flag. He's got it on his license plate. And, and for many people of color, they say when they see that flag, they feel like people are saying, we want to go back to the days of slavery. So, I mean, can you really say, well, it just means whatever it means to you? I, it, it definitely means something to, to many people. Yeah, it, it does mean something to people. But honestly, what, take, take an average person. Walk, him, walk, walk that person through the world and tell me that one person is not going to be offended by something or many things. Well, but Drew, where I disagree, thank you for the call. I mean, it it has been used as a backdrop for the Klan. And then, yes, this was sparked by what happened with the shooter in the church. There's 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 no no one's arguing that. And even, you know, it's going beyond that, though. How far should it go? Let's hear this is Mitch McConnell saying we should consider removing the Jefferson Davis statue. We, curiously enough have a statue of Jefferson Davis in the Capitol in Frankfurt. Davis' sole connection to Kentucky was he was born there. He subsequently moved to Mississippi, and Kentucky, of course, did not secede from the Union. So I think it's appropriate, certainly in Kentucky, to be talking about the appropriateness of continuing to have Jefferson Davis' statue in a very prominent place uh, in our state capitol. Let's go to line six. Russ is listing in Nevada on KKOH on the race for president. Rush, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello, how are you today? Very well, Russ. Go right ahead. Uh, you were talking about qualifications for Trump, why he doesn't have any political background. Uh, I don't really think he really needs it. I mean, he doesn't need it to uh, get things done. Well, you know, it's one thing, Russ. I don't know how, you know, what you're voting, who you vote for, or how you vote for someone, but, I mean, there there is a system. There are people that kind of gradually work their way in. Maybe first they run for city council, or maybe they run become a mayor. Maybe they become uh, some kind of state representative in some way and slowly work up the ladder. Don't, don't you think it's a big jump that somebody just announces, I, I've never run for office, but I'm ready to be the president? 
I think it's better than what we've had for the last 40 years since I've been alive. I mean, it, we've had the same speeches over and over again from both sides saying how they're going to fix this, they're going to do that. But in the end, they concede to a Congress that doesn't work with them. They end up not getting things done. And maybe it's about time we had somebody who didn't have a political background who was willing to stand up and fix things without having to shake hands or bend over and take it, you know? <laughs> Thank you for the call, Russ. You know, he makes a good point. I mean, how, how have things worked out with having the people that, that have been in office, that have, have been uh, politicians? I mean, I, I, I think of anything. Don't you find right now that there certainly seems to be a momentum where people do want an outsider? Ross Perot certainly, you know, garnered a lot of attention. Ross Perot helped Bill Clinton become the president. That's really what happened. He hurt President Bush and denied him a second term. But Trump, Trump is, uh, he, he is, he's no dummy. And and it, uh, what I, one thing I like about Donald Trump, he's doing everything that the, the consultants would tell you not to do. He, he states his wealth. He's not embarrassed about that. You know, how many times have you seen these people, they're loaded, totally wealthy, and they, you know, go into the diner and they have like old clothes and cutting coupons or how about when you know that was ridiculous remember Mitt Romney they showed him doing his own laundry at the hotel or motel they were staying at as if he has the time to do his own laundry I mean I I can't stand that stuff so to have someone that comes out and says yes I'm filthy rich I have nine billion and therefore I don't have to take donations I I think it is refreshing what do you think 1-855-400-SAVAGE 1-855-400-7282 Let's go to Jason, who's listening on WNIX in Mississippi. Jason, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Jason. Greetings from the great state of Mississippi, sir. <laughs> Welcome, Jason. Go right ahead. Well, the, that kid posing with that flag is just chum in the water for all the race baiters, and it's creating all kind of havoc here. Uh, and, and the political showmanship that's popping up is just insane. My personal representative, uh, Benny Thompson, has come out and said he will not even display our state flag anymore. And uh, personally, I consider that reprehensible. And but your governor is, took the, the governor took down, the governor of Mississippi took down the flag today. Isn't that correct? I have not heard that. Yes. Uh, but the thing is, is it's all showmanship because they know our political process in the state. Uh, it's not done through the state house. It can't be done through the governor. It has to be done through a referendum to the people. And, of course, by the time that referendum finally comes to the people, all the the media who was kicked up by this will have moved on to some other shiny thing. Yes. And when... um and all you'll hear about it is some little blurb about, oh, those racist rednecks. <laughs> now, Jason, I misspoke. It was the Alabama governor that, that ordered the Confederate flag removed from the Capitol grounds. Jason, what about uh, some of the, the plaques or the monuments that are up? Would you would you have a problem if some of those start to be removed? Uh, the the monuments? Uh, yeah, it's, it's erasing history. You can't learn from history by erasing it. Right. Yes, yeah, some bad things happen under that flag a lot. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of horrible things, but you can't learn from it if you try to hide it and forget about it. Uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, Jason, I, I agree with you. There's a difference between someone flying that flag and, and, and whether people like it or not, the, the flag, who it's associated with, is is a lot of these white supremacist groups. You can't ignore that. You can't ignore who's embraced that flag and wrapped themselves in it and the momentum. I, I think it it's it's going too far when they start saying, remove the monuments, remove the different flag, the plaques. It, it is. That, that, is uh, that is history. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 7282. Let's go to Greg on line four. He's listening to the program on WMAL in Washington. Greg, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Greg. Yeah, John. I got something to say about the flag. I think it ought to stay up. It's a piece of history. What about all the black men that signed up, volunteered for that war, fought, died? They gave their blood. What would you say to their family? This is so, ridiculous. They did it all for nothing. They died for nothing. That's what you're saying. Not well, you, but I mean, that's what... how many how many people of color actually signed up to fight to keep slavery? I mean, are you come on? 
I mean, yes, there were some, but it certainly wasn't the majority, Greg. It wasn't about slavery. Well, he can argue that, and I recognize it was about taxes. But either way, that that was one of the fallouts of it was was then it, you know was slavery. But thank you for the call, Greg. But you, you can't. You, you can't just dismiss it that way. Listen, th- this is the aftermath of what happened in South Carolina with the shooting, and all the people that say that they see that flag as as hate. And I recognize a lot of the people listening right now. They have tremendous uh, pride in that flag, and it means a lot to a lot of different families. Uh, but right now, as I said earlier, you you can't find one elected official that's going to step forward and say, "I think we should keep it." One eight five five four hundred Savage. Debbie is listening on KSFO. Debbie, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hey, you know what? I went out and bought one of those flags, those Confederate flags, yesterday because if they're going to be just like Prohibition, man, you won't be able to find them. <laughs> you can fly that in your house as much as you want. I I, I don't think it's going to completely go away, but a lot of the big retailers are not going to sell it. I got, uh, you go to eBay. They got tons of them, and you can get free shipping too. I, I have no desire to buy one, but go ahead. But you, so you wanted to go out and buy one? Yeah, I want. Well, well, if you don't like it, avert your eyes. And why don't they? It's like in Washington State, they have the state flag, and then they have the the, the United States of America flag on top of it because it's a respectful thing. And I don't know if it's in their constitution or whatever, but it's a respectful thing. You fly the the nation's flag, then underneath it, you fly. Your, your state flag, what's up with... I don't get the big deal about Confederate flag. I, I have no idea why they're getting all bunged up of it, other than it's a shiny thing that they could stick out there so you won't be uh, interested. Well, in you, you, uh, all right, it, 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 you're being insensitive. I mean, you had someone posing with the flag and, and basically wrapping himself in the flag and putting it on his car, and then he walks in and kills nine innocent people in a church, and you don't see... Why people would be offended by that? I mean, are you that naive? If you were a family member, you you would be wildly offended by that. So it's one thing if you disagree, but it's another thing if say like you can't understand the uproar. Of course, there would be an uproar. There should be an uproar. One eight five five four hundred Savage. One eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage, inviting you to call the program one. 855 400 Savage, 1 855 400 7282. And visit the website. All news, breaking news, and different stories. It's michaelsavage.com for all the latest news and headlines. And also sign up for the Savage newsletter as well. Let's go out to your calls. Steve is calling on line one from Winston, North Carolina on WFNC. Steve, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Steve. Yes, hi, sir. Um, listen, regarding uh, Trump, uh, it doesn't bother me that he's not held uh, political office. Uh, Eisenhower uh, never f- held political office uh, prior, and uh, everybody knew him and figured he was a great leader, and there you have it. So people have been listening to Trump for years, you know, and they've got a pretty good idea of what he's like and very capable person. So it's, it would be fine with me. Well, thank you for the call, Steve. I, I still think the lack of uh, any type of political experience is going to hurt him. Line four is Rebecca in Omaha on the Savage Nation. Hello, Rebecca. Hi. Um, I just wanted to make a comment just with... Go ahead. Uh, um, with, uh, about Go ahead. ...about the Confederate flag. I don't agree that people should be holding on so tight to the flag. I think that's a little strange when the same people will say... Let's just forget about slavery. Let's stop pulling the race card, but they want to hold tight to that. It has bothered me, though. I've seen some spray-painted vandalism on some Confederate monuments lately, and I don't think, I think it's just a little tacky to do that. It may be, Rebecca, but that's that's not going to go away. I mean, the way this has now been portrayed, the, the battle flag, the Confederate flag, it's almost akin to a swastika. Again, you're listening to the Savage Nation. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. As always, the website is michaelsavage.com.
Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to The Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You can call into the program. Why not? Just dial 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Our website, michaelsavage.com, all the latest news and headlines. Celebrate America this 4th of July with Countdown to Mecca, the bestseller from Dr. Michael Savage. Also sign up for the Savage newsletter at michaelsavage.com. You'll love it. It arrives two to three times a week, right to your inbox, totally free. Sign up today for the Savage newsletter. And keep in mind, the Savage Scholarship winners will be announced July 2nd. 1,700 applicants, 1,700 submitted essays on what it means to be an American. Five winners will receive $20,000 each, total of $100,000 that Dr. Michael Savage put in to all of this. Well, President Obama speaking Celebrating Ramadan, the president spoke and said no one should be targeted because of who they are. I want to thank the members of our diplomatic corps who are here today, as well as our members of Congress and all those serving across government who are joining us. And I especially want to recognize all the inspiring young people uh, who are here today, many of whom I've put at my table, uh, to all of you. And to Muslim Americans across the country, uh, Ramadan Kareem. You know, let's hear clip seven. The president went on to talk about the sacredness of Ramadan. You know, our annual White House Iftar recognizes the sacredness of Ramadan to more than 1.5 billion Muslims around the world. It's a time when Muslims recommit themselves to their faith, following days of discipline with nights of gratitude for the gifts that God bestows. It's a time of spiritual renewal and a reminder of one's duty to our fellow man to serve one another and lift up the less fortunate. Today, the Boston bomber was sentenced to death. Jokar Sanea finally, for the first time, addressed the court. And what did he say? He said, I'd like to begin in the name of Allah. This is the blessed month of Ramadan, a month during which hearts change. Prophet Muhammad said, if you have not thanked people, you have not thanked God. He went on to thank his lawyers, the jury, and the court. He was sentenced to death. But before he left, he said, I ask Allah to have mercy upon me and on my brother. It was great. The judge in that case said, no God would ever condone what you did here. And said, the, me- the evil that men do lives after them quoting Shakespeare. The judge also told him, no one will mention that your teachers liked you or you were a good athlete. You murdered and maimed innocent people. And someone who believes in a God who remarks the maiming and murder of others did not believe in the God of Islam. So the Boston bomber being told off by the judge. Now, big controversy remains regarding the Confederate flag. Now you have... The car in Dukes of Hazard suddenly is being stopped. They're not going to sell it anymore. Warner Brothers is no longer going to sell that. And now there's even a movement to not only the flag, of which the governor said we're no longer going to fly it. Now the governor of Alabama also stood up and said that's not going to be flown. But now you also have a movement to maybe go after different monuments and different plaques that are out, or I should say displayed celebrating or signifying the Civil War. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Let's go out to line 7. Mark is listening in Nevada on KKOH. Mark, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, John. How are you doing? Very well, Mark. Go right ahead. Good. Well, I don't have much connection with 
Confederate flag. But, you know, what happens when somebody wraps themselves in an American flag, does a mass murder, and then somebody becomes offended by the American flag? You're not going to compare the American flag to the to the Confederate flag. I mean, Mark, if anything, let's let's talk first about the Confederate flag. Did you say that you you don't care that that's being taken down? I I have no connection to the Confederate flag, so it, it doesn't matter to me either way. But I think erasing history or people's traditions or you know something that means something to them. No, no one is. You know what? I'm, I'm glad you said that. No one, no one is erasing. Number one, no one's erasing history, and and uh, nothing's going to be done to erase history. But you can't ignore that was the battle flag, and I, I know people will say the Civil War was was over taxes, but it was also over the end of slavery, and the Klan has embraced that that uh, that Confederate battle flag. You have this goes. To, I mean, the killer is right there. And he's waving the flag, and he had his as, as his license plate. You 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 can't ignore. I'm I, I'm sure there are some German people that say you know they had relatives that served honorably uh, in the Third Reich. But I, I I'm not about to put that in the same category as a swastika. But you you can't ignore people of color, people in that community that say, here you have a killer waving that flag. He then goes into a church and like a coward, brutally kills, massacres nine people. Did he go to a tough neighborhood? No. Did he go with there other people armed? No. Who do we, where did he go? To a church. Should have been the safest place. And that is his flag. So you, you, you can't ignore that. And, and I'm not going to tie that in. With, I don't think it's the same as the American flag. I don't see any connection like that in the American flag. If somebody wrapped themselves in an American flag and then went, killed a bunch of people, it, it's not, uh, white supremacists are not wrapping themselves in the American flag. It's just the opposite, right? You, you normally don't even see them with the, the American flag. Let's go to Gregory on line nine. He's in Idaho, listening on KBOI. Gregory, you're up. This is John DePietro, and you're on the Savage Nation. Hello, Gregory. Yeah, hi, John. How you doing? Very well, Gregory. Go right ahead. Okay, um, the mayor of Boise yesterday uh, did one of the uh, Mississippi state flag taken down out of City Hall because part of it incorporates the rebel flag. And uh, I understand the the uh, ramifications and, and the tremendous outreach and anger for what's happened in South Carolina. But I but I think I think that's kind of Politically, political correctness overreach on his part. Um, that is that is Mississippi's issue to change their state flag if they want to, not the mayor of a city in another state. I thought that was a little ridiculous. And the last caller uh, about about the American flag. That was kind of my thoughts too. I understand why you're saying there's no comparison. I spent 26 years of my life serving this nation and defending that flag. Yep. Uh, and that flag is everything to me, and it does mean a lot to me. But uh, history is history, and, and like the Trump, like Trump said, put it in a museum. Right, right. And again, if if people for whatever reason, thank you for the call, Greg. You want to fly the Confederate battle flag? If you want to buy it, if you want to fly it, I mean that's up to you. But as far as being flown over state government or flown over the capital of South Carolina or Alabama, yeah, I, I do think it is insensitive. I think it's very insensitive based on on what happened. You can't ignore what happened. How would you feel if you were a family member, one of the people that were killed? And there's the the killer, you know, posing with the flag. They don't wrap themselves in the American flag. That's the flag they wrap themselves in. And white supremacists have in the past, and the Klan have. I mean, it's one thing if you disagree. It's another thing to be naive, like, well, you know, the flag means different things to different people. Not There seems to be a clear theme going on the flag. Let's go to line three. Joy is listening on WABC in New York. Joy, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, John. It's Hi Joy's there. brother. She had to run oh. out on animal rescue, but All she right. asked me to convey to you and your yes. listeners. Yes, Joy's brother. Go right ahead. That Joy's, that, uh, Joy's thoughts are the following. Trump had the momentum. He lost it with his position on this matter. We lived in South Carolina. We know the men of South Carolina. And they will not stand for this. And Trump got a momentum in the polls, as you mentioned, in the state of New Hampshire, 
which still wears live free or die on their license plate. This matter will could lead uh, to being the next Fort Sumter. I hope that it does. Let the battle begin here. We in the Northeast support our brothers in the South to fight this with every uh, stick that they have and the pea shooters that they have. And in some cases, the, uh, the armaments that they have. And stop the lunacy. Your callers are exactly right. If this was the American flag, what a preposterous comment you had, John, that because this killer, the shooter kid, whoever he was and whoever raised him, and I think he was raised by the CIA, he, he wore... You think he was raised by the CIA? Uh, it's possible that he could be. Or is, or is your mind Him. closed, John? Do you have a Him. open mind or a closed mind? He was raised by the CIA. That degenerate loser. He might have been. Coward. Your... Yeah, that would go in and kill nine innocent people, and now you want to say he was raised by the CIA. Is that what you're saying, Joy's brother? So what I'm saying is that... And you're telling me to keep my mind open. If he was such, a, If he was so brave, why didn't he go after some other people that had guns? And this is what you want to fight over? All right, let me let me just ask you this, Joy's brother. You say Trump won't win with that comment and he's lost momentum. Then which Republican candidate is going to knock him off because they've all said take the flag down? Answer me that, Joy's brother. Has Carly Fiorina said that? Uh, I don't know if she's on record saying that. So you think she's going to win? I didn't say she's going to win. I, I don't even think she's going to make it to the debate, Joy's brother. Woman who knows how to uh, get enthusiasm. How do you know Trump she wasn't raised by the CIA? Trump supporter, and I hope that he's the next president of the United States. But he who's that? Side on this, and you will see him walk back, walk this back somewhat. No. He's going to have a lot of answering to do because his support comes from uh, from his machismo, and and the men in this country who will work for him to get elected. Voting for him is not going to help John, because voting has been uh, lost starting in 60 when Kennedy All right. handed the election. I, I, now I know why Joy ran out. All right, there's only so much I can listen to. I disagree. I think the flag should come down. And in the thing that I, I think it's a reach to start to go after some of the other monuments and the plaques. But that flag, whether people like it or not, has become synonymous with racism. It has. White supremacist and the Klan. And it, and it really kicked off with the killer posing with it. You disagree? I'll take the call. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Whether it's you or your brother or your sister on the line. 1-855-400-7282. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Well, what puts me... This is the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in. For Dr. Michael Savage, you're welcome to join the program. Just call 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. Out to the phones. Line one is Dan. He's listening in Oregon on KUGN. Dan, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Yeah, John. Um, I listened to Trump's uh, uh, announcement speech. Yep. That man knows nothing about the Constitution. You're I'm wrong. A lawyer. I've You're wrong. The Constitution. He says he'll call up the president of Ford and say, if you don't bring your stuff back here, I'm going to charge you a $35 tariff every time you ship or 35% tariff every time you ship a vehicle back here. He can't do that without an act of Congress and without him signing the legislation. Hey, Dan, you can't have all these companies just going over the border and then they're not paying taxes. What do you expect them to do? At least somebody's standing up to them. Something. We already have an imperial president who's usurping the Constitution. His name is Barack Obama. I don't want a conservative president who's, who usurps the Constitution, whose name is Donald Trump. You're wrong. I want, we're a nation of laws, and by God, somebody ought to start obeying them. Thank you for the call, Dan, but you're, you're absolutely wrong. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. Let's go to line six. Ed is listening on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Ed, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello, John. How are you doing today? Very well, Ed. Go right ahead. Okay. The one thing many people forget is the Stars and Stripes flew over slavery 
for over 100 years in this country. During the Civil War, slavery was still legal in the North. It did not end in the North till after the South had surrendered in the 14th Amendment. So even after April uh, 1865, all the way up there for four months, slavery was still legal in the North. The Stars and Stripes flew over the genocide of the Native American tribes, one tribe being, our nation being, the Cherokee and the Chael of Bitter Tears. Ed, but but no one is associating that with white supremacists. The Klan are not posing with the American flag. The shooter did not pose with the American flag. No one's denying the history of the Civil War. What are you talking about? They did in the 50s. The Klan marched with the American flag in the 50s and 60s. I saw them doing it. They were doing it outside the gate of the post I was stationed at. The Klan has used the American flag for many things, just as heinous. Ed, today, the, the, whether people like it or not, they have hijacked it. The Confederate battle flag is the flag and symbol of white supremacy, whether you like it or not. That's what happened. That's what happened with the shooter, and that's why there's such an uproar. It has nothing to do to deny the history that took place. You, you, you can't look at that and all those people posing with that flag and say it, it means something else. That, that's why they're embracing it. And, and, and maybe it is unfair it's taken on a new meaning, but that's the meaning that it's taken on. And that's why people are screaming so much about it. And as I said, you can't find one politician right now or leader that will say it's staying up. So whether it, it, it's Trump or whether it's Lindsey Graham or whether it's the governor of South Carolina or Alabama or anywhere right now, again, I say show me one politician that is saying that flag should stay, it should fly. It, it's not happening. It's not reality. People may want to try to do that in the background, but they're not willing to put themselves out there like like that. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. 1-855-400-7282. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. More ahead on the Savage Nation. Savage Nation, this is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're welcome to call the program. Be part of it. 1-855-400-SAVAGE. one 855 Four hundred seven two eight two. Fourth of July is coming up. You want to celebrate America? Well, how about Countdown to Mecca? The new bestseller, the new thriller from best-selling author, the one and only Dr. Michael Savage. Boy, that would be a nice read. Fourth of July, you're lying there by the pool or the beach, and you're enjoying Countdown to Mecca. Remember to sign up for the Savage Newsletter. Go to our website, michaelsavage.com. The Savage Newsletter, think of this, arrives two to three times a week, right to your inbox, and it's totally free. Sign up today for the Savage Newsletter at michaelsavage.com. As a reminder, the Savage Scholarship winners will be announced July 2nd. How about 1,700 applicants submitted essays? Isn't that fantastic? On what it means to be an American. Now, five winners will be announced, and they'll receive 20 thousand dollars each total of one hundred thousand that dr savage put into all of this but sign up or uh, i should say sign up for the savage newsletter and also log on to the website michaelsavage.com where you can get all the latest news and headlines like obama extending amnesty to illegals in prison jails or how about the report sweeping new hostage police due to Idiot at State Department will harm Americans. Also, the latest on ISIS. That sick video. How about now where they're caging the prisoners and then drowning them? You can see all of it at michaelsavage.com. Don't forget also the Drudge Report and all the latest headlines on the Drudge Report, such as the Pope again making news, saying family breakups can be morally Necessary. This is complete opposite. First time the Pope has ever said that there should ever be a breakup in the family. Also, the story on the mystery of the 600 dogs that supposedly jumped from the haunted suicide bridge. New poll information on the Drudge Report. Trump up, doing very well in New Hampshire, number two. Governor of New Jersey, Chris Christie, not so much. New low. 
30% approval rating. I love the story in the Drudge Report. Whole Foods, you ever shop there? Under investigation in New York City for, quote, worst case of overcharges. I, I thought that's the reason people like Whole Foods. Isn't that part of the deal, that you pay so much for the produce and everything that it, you know people actually think it tastes better? I don't mind paying $10 for an apple. I think it just tastes better. Again, those are all just some of the headlines on michaelsavage.com and the Drudge Report. Now, Hillary Clinton was speaking in a black church and told the story about her mother. Nearly 6 million young Americans between the ages of 16 and 24 are out of school and out of work. Think of that. Neither learning nor working. And the numbers are particularly high for young people of color. Statistics like these are rebukes to the real progress we have made. I learned this not from politics, but from my mother, who taught me that everybody, everybody needs a chance and a champion. She knew what it was like to have neither one. Her own parents abandoned her. By 14, she was out on her own working as a housemaid. Years later, when I was old enough to understand, I asked her, what kept you going? Her answer was very simple. Kindness along the way from someone who believed she mattered. All lives matter. Let's go out to line four. Cindy is listening to the Savage Nation online. She's in Savannah. Cindy, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello. How are you? Very well, Cindy. Go right ahead. Well, I just wanted to voice my opinion about taking down the Confederate flag. I'm totally against it. Um, we've allowed a group of people to cause a negative outlook on this flag. I was born and raised in Savannah, Georgia. Um, all my life, the Confederate flag has been around. I've never had um, ill feelings about the negativity that has been brought up about the flag. It's my heritage. It's part of my heritage. I am not racist by no means. Um, I was raised um, in the 60s when um, they had integration come into the school. I believe that everybody should have a fair chance at education. Um, and as I was, I was telling you earlier, uh, my great-grandfather had slaves. He, he raised nine children who was orphaned. Out of those nine children, all nine of them went to college and got a college degree and made something of their self. And how I know many, that's just one story out of many of No, that's that interesting. How, tell me about how many slaves did your family own? He had the nine children. And then there was um, Dessa, who was one of the children that he kept around after they got up and got married. And Dessa, Dessa was like my nanny when I was a little girl. And she would come to my house, and she would play with me. And I can even remember that when we would go and take Dessa home, Dessa would ride the bus. And, of course, back then, you know, black people had to sit in the back of the bus. Well, my mom and myself, we sat in the back with Dessa because my mother said, if she's good enough to keep my child, then... I'm good enough, you know, to ride in the back with her. Now, Cindy, the nine children that your grandfather had, they they were, they were, uh, would you say they were orphans that he took in and then made them slaves? He took in those orphans. Yeah. And I don't want to say they were slaves. He took in those orphans and he, they helped him on the plantation. Okay. Were they black or white? They were black? They were black. So he took nine kids who were orphans and made them slaves. He didn't make them slaves. Well, I mean, he he treated he had them then work at, on his plantation. Work in the fields. Wow, that's amazing. Did he have his? Well, he must have had children of his own that were that that were white. But then, so so did that go on a lot? So you would go adopt black children that were orphans, but then put them to work on the plantation. But his children also worked on the plantation too. His, but probably not in the in the in the fields, right? Or certainly not in the not in the same capacity as the as the orphans. He worked out in the fields, picking the peas and the corn and all that, and wow. the peanuts. 
And 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 what about his his father? So was your family big? Uh, owned quite a number of slaves. No. No. Uh, my grand my grandfather was in con- in construction. I see. But and, all right. So of the nine, one of them was this this girl or woman Dessa, and she stayed on with your family and then was a nanny for for you, I guess. Mm-hmm. When I was growing up, but she had her own family too. Yeah. And then what about the other eight orphan quote orphans? What about them? What did they did they escape? No, they didn't need to escape. Why would <laughs> oh, they escape? Yeah. No, but I mean, what happened to the other eight? They were part of the family. So uh, well, kind of. I mean, you know, I mean, you say that, but they're really not part of the family because they're adopted. But he, your grandfather, adopted them to basically work the land. No, he adopted them to take take care of them so right. they wouldn't... Well, then he provided, I'm sure, education for them and, and, and uh, I'm sure, you know what, a better life than they had in the orphanage. Is that fair, Cindy? Dan, they ate with the family. They ate at the family table, the nine of them? Yeah. Okay. And and how do you know that? How do I know that? Because I, I, I know my family history. And and your mother, so everyone would sit down, the, the nine orphans... And then your grandfather, your grandmother, and then how many? That's your was that your mom's family? How many children did they have? Okay, my grandfather had four kids. Four my kids, and then he adopted the nine who were who were black. Orphans. Orphans. All right. So they had so they had thirteen kids plus your grandfather and your grandmother. Yes. Wow. Now, my grandfather, my great grandfather, who had his four biological children. Yeah. They still have a farm up in Dover, Georgia. Hmm. It's still an active farm with cattle and the field and all that. Did he fly the Confederate battle flag, your grandfather? Went and had got a college education that was paid for by my great grandfather. Yeah. But did he fly the Confederate flag, your grandfather? That I do not know. You don't know. Did Dessa fly the Confederate battle flag? No, nobody. No, no, no. No. Are you still in touch with her, Dessa? No, Dessa died. She did. She passed away. Yeah, she died yeah. about mm, six years ago, six or seven years ago. She All got right. Alzheimer's, and then she passed away about six, six or seven years ago. I'm sorry <laughs> to hear that. Well, you know, Cindy, thank you for the call. And obviously, I don't want to. You know, that's your family history. And if 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 I had a choice, if I were in an orphanage. And I had a choice of either staying there or going to live with a white family on their plantation. And then I had to work the fields and I got to have dinner with them. Yeah, I would, I'd take the gamble on working uh, and living with your grandfather and your grandmother as opposed to staying in the orphanage. That sounds like a, that sounds like a better deal to me. Let's go to line one. Liz is listening on WDRC in Connecticut. Liz, you're, this is John DePietro and you're on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, John. Thanks for taking my call. Very welcome. Now, did your grandfather have slaves? No. Oh, all right. Did from your grandmother North- have slaves? I'm from the Northeast. I see. I'd like to, I'd like to uh, say something. Go right ahead. Fundament- Don't you find that interesting? So you go and adopt kids, but then you actually turn them into slaves on your plantation. He took care of them. Yes, yes, he did take care of them. All right, go right ahead, Liz. Okay. Um, I'd like to uh, talk about the fundamentals of um, symbols. And I'd like to say, uh, symbols are not the thing they represent. They're two separate things. Give me an example. The f- a flag is a p- piece of cloth. Now, How one say group, that? one group perceives the f- that uh, piece of cloth to mean one thing. Another group perceives the cloth, that cloth, to represent or mean something else. All right. Would you shop in a store that had a flag of a swastika above the store? Would I shop in that store? That was my question. Chances, no. Why? It's just a piece of cloth. thing is this, but the thing, and this is why... Would you shop in a store that had an, a flag of ISIS above the store? This, the symbol, this symbol was chosen to function as a wedge. That's why it was chosen. Okay? By who? thing is this. No, it is a wedge. Well, that's why it was chosen. That's yes. Why. Right. Yeah. But, but what's happening is that one group 
okay, is being told, your perception is more valid than this other group's perception, and your perception should take precedence over this other group's perception. That, that, that You know what, Liz, that is true. Thank you for the call. But, again, it, it's like any any situation. Maybe someone says that the, the SWAT stick is, SWAT stick is uh, it's a piece of history. It's just a, it's just a flag that they, that they had in Germany. But I, I, how many people, you know, are going to agree with that? Let's go to line eight. Lanny is listing online in Destin, Florida. Lanny, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Yeah, I think that was SWAT stick. I just wanted to uh, make a comment that the Native American groups use that. And uh, also, I think the Finns used it in World War II. And, uh... Uh, you know what became of that, but you can go uh, Ravel, any modeling group uh, that sells like the plastic models of airplanes or uniforms, you can buy uh, swastika or Nazi, Nazi personnel anywhere you want to get it. Oh, come on. That means one thing. Well, you, you, are you saying that it means something else? <laughs> I'm just saying it's available. Uh, fine. Uh, thank you for the call. Yeah, it, it is available, but I mean, who's who's gonna who's gonna buy something like that? Let's go to line three. Joe is calling from Des Moines, Iowa. Joe, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Joe. Hey, John. How's it going, buddy? Very well, Joe. Go right ahead. Uh, well, you know, all this talk about the Confederate flag. What really sickens me today that the media doesn't want to tell us about that much is the trampling of the American flag and the burning of the flags all across the nation and these protests in the college uh, campuses. It makes me sick. Yes. You know, you, you know this Confederate flag. That you know, I don't put any stock into what a psychopath drapes over their shoulders and walks around in. It doesn't do much for me. Um, uh, you know, I've known the Confederate flag to be a, a hateful symbol towards African Americans and stuff like that. Yep. Now, um, what? But you know, but, you know what, Joe? I'm going to hold you there. But I, I agree with you. You know what? I I can't stand these people that burn the American flag, and they were doing it a lot during the protests. They were doing it in Baltimore. They were doing it in Ferguson. I, I can't stand that. I know they have the right. I'm not denying that. But I, I can't stand that either. That's something I would never do. One eight five five four hundred Savage. This is John DePietro sitting in. For Dr. Michael Savage, you're listening to the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. This is the Savage Nation. John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Let's go to line three. Willie is listening on KWQW in Iowa. Willie, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello. Thanks for taking the call. Welcome. I, uh, I just called to say 100% of Americans know that the Confederate flag is used as a racist symbol. And if there's a small percentage of people who have some kind of pride in that flag, I don't believe that's any excuse for us to fly it on any state or federal buildings. And they need to all come down. Now, Willie, I, I don't know if it's, I mean, I don't know if it's 100%. I mean, what about those, listen, it's part of Southern pride. It, it's just part of the rebel feel that it, it's not meant in that way. I mean, do you, if you see that at a NASCAR race or at a college football game on a campus, do you then associate that with the uh, racist? I, I, I think now what you're saying is, is true, that it is coming down. But I think that's a little harsh. 100%, Willie? No. No? 100%, Willie? I don't know. Thank you. Thank you for the call. Folks, remember, sign up, log on to the website, michaelsavage.com. Remember to celebrate America this 4th of July. This will be a great read. You're relaxing on the 4th of July and you're reading Countdown to Mecca, the latest bestseller by Dr. Michael Savage. And as always, check the website, latest news, headlines, and sign up for the Savage newsletter. It all starts at michaelsavage.com. This is John DePietro sitting in for the one and only Dr. Michael Savage, and you're listening to The Savage Nation.